we are on the way. Oh my God. We're on the way to do a community radio interview about my book. And I haven't talked about the book in a while because the book has been out for a year and a half. So, but the book, the book's easy. It's about New Hampshire beer, which is something I, I kind of understand New Hampshire beer, but, uh, Hey, thanks for the shout out for the beard. Yeah. Let's, let's go on a side topic real quick. The beard is a thing I don't want to get rid of, but I also want to get rid of at the same time. Had the beard since 2005. My wife wants to see, she's never seen me without the beard and she, she just once wants to see it, but I'm afraid because I have no hair or very few hair follicles upstairs. I, if I shave this thing, it's not coming back. Furthermore, I think I'll look like a big baby. So I know, and I've seen a lot of people shave their beards like all of a sudden, and, I, and they walk in and, and they look, they look maybe ten years younger, but in the bad way. Like you look like you're 13 years old, uh, but I know you're 30 or 40 years old. So I'm just too scared. But uh, yeah, so beard it's gonna stay, but I might trim it because I, it's it's so hipster, man. Like I don't want to be the, the guy like, oh, he has a beard because he's into beer, but no, man, I've had a beer, a beer since day one, even before I was drinking beer, so, I don't know, whatever, we'll, we'll keep it, keep it for now, now I'll never go back to just go tea, because that's not a look I was, I was super into, but, yeah, that's, that's your, that's your daily beard talk right there, and what more that came from, how you liking this little dangly thing, maybe if I start doing more of these, I'll cut it off, but this is my, this is my symbol, if I, uh, as I'm drumming and driving, I just smack that as a as a way to like crash or something when I'm listening to some radio. But yeah, going to the radio station, it's about 15 minutes away. So I'll be talking about New Hampshire beer, brewing from Sea to Summit, which is a book I wrote with my friend Mike uh, a couple years ago. And it's crazy how how the, the ecosystem of beer has changed. Um, the the book includes 25 breweries, two of which we're still in planning, but now I believe we just just got over 50 breweries in the state, which is crazy. I yeah, it's nuts. But we when we had stopped when we had stopped writing the book, there were 40 breweries. But we had to, we had to cap it somewhere. We say, listen, breweries keep popping up as we write this book. The book has a deadline. We have to make sure this book gets out. Um, so we'll, we'll cap it at the breweries uh, that stopped in 2012 which is a good cap. So the, those breweries were up and running for a couple years and they were they were established. So we, we wrote the book based on breweries that are still in New Hampshire or that started in New Hampshire and have been there um, up to 2012. But yeah, since then, the past three years in the state has been absolute madness. Um, so so many great breweries have, have, have come up that, that would be excellent additions to this book, which might call for, a, I don't know, a round two of the book, but it's so tough to write a, a history or a, a book about a point in time. I, I hesitate to write a second one just because it's, I, I would hate to write something and then have a brewery go away. There's one brewery in particular that is, does not exist anymore um, in this book, and it's Blue Lobster, for those that are familiar with, with, the, um, with the area. Blue Lobster Brewery out of Hampton, New Hampshire. Uh, recently closed, but shortly after we published the book, um, the head brewer, uh, Dave Sikowski, left, and he left the brewery, and he was an integral part of the book. He was our very first interview, so it's crazy to, to have, that, have that change, but then to have someone, to have this book still sold in stores, and to pick it up and to read something about Blue Lobster, and to want to go to Blue Lobster, and they can't, it's kind of, it's, it, it's tough, but I guess that's that's writing. That's nonfiction for you, right there. Is you can't really <laughs> you you can't write about a specific point in time because time changes, especially in the beer world. Driving on the world famous Route 33 right now. Where are we at? Where are we at? Stratum. Yeah. So if you rewind, if you rewind this video, you will find out exactly where I live. That's that's just how that works. Hope everyone's good. Hope everyone's rocking, uh, ready for Christmas or the holidays, what have you. What's funny is the past 
the past two or three times I've been to the mall, I have heard Merry Christmas more time this year than any year since they started doing the whole Happy Holidays thing. So people are really trying to go back to their roots of uh, Merry Christmas. And even one guy looked me straight in the eye. It was, it was a guy behind the counter was, hey, Merry Christmas. And I'm like, hey, thank you. Whatever. It's, it's, it's uh, the, the war on Christmas continues. But, uh, yeah, hope everyone's ready for the, for the holidays. Taking some time off. I myself am taking uh, after today. I'm off until next year, which is badass. Pretty sucked. Yeah, last night I went to um, I went to two places. I went to Neighborhood Beer Company in Exeter, New Hampshire, and talked about or they were releasing a new a new style of beer. Literally, a, a new style of beer was released on the world, um, and I'm gonna mess it up. It's like a double Dunkel Weizenbach, um, not necessarily a blend of the styles, but um, has traits of those styles in the beer. Um, it's a 10.1%. They call it a mahogany ale. And it it tastes like 4%, 5%. So it's kind of a, it, it, it's a sleeper hit. Zero heat on the back end. It's uh, not too sweet, um, even though I find a lot of Doppel Box could, be, could tend to be a little bit too sweet. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it, Horst Durmbusch, the guy that, um, that heads up neighborhood beer company was there to talk about the beer and he's super passionate about it they piloted that um that's beer style in montreal a couple months ago and uh yeah it's it's now entering the world beer cup already um he's happy with it it's a it's a good beer the place was it was, it was full when i was there yesterday and it was like five o'clock at night so good things coming out of, out of exeter i'm a huge fan um they, they kept saying that they while they're not setting out to be different, they're setting out to introduce this, you know, these styles to to the state, to the world, because a lot of the breweries coming up now, you're, you're going to have you know, the IPAs, the stouts, the ambers. Well, Horst Dernbusch might sound a little bit un-American to you, it's because he's German, and they're just making some pretty solid German-style beers and, like, really hitting them home. So I think they've, only, they've already come out with, like, six beers Anywhere from a short beer to uh, copper ale to this mahogany, uh, but yeah, they're they're doing some good things, and it's 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 refreshing, and it's also educating. It's neat to it's neat to learn some stuff because if if all these breweries are coming out with IPAs, sooner or later everyone's gonna you know realize that or know what an IPA is and, and understand that. But to be able to be educated about, um, about new beer styles is is kind of my thing, and I I like it. So I look forward to learning more from from him. And from from the, from the guys in the neighborhood because they're just phew, and they've only been open two months and I believe they're over they're at 25 accounts around this around uh, the sea coast um, and growing so yeah, check it out yeah that beer's available till I mean it's till it's gone I, I know they there it's only it's only available there but as I was there they they brought one cake over to Front Row Pizza which is across the street uh, in Exeter. But so if, if you want to, if, if you're not there for when they open, then you get over there. And another thing about uh, Neighborhood is they did, or they, they can now do pints, uh, half pints and pints of beer, which uh, by law in New Hampshire, you're required to serve food uh, of a hot uh, variety. So hot food must be served um, in order to get a license to serve pints of beer. So they do, I saw their menu yesterday, I didn't bring it, or didn't, didn't really take a picture of it, but there's about four grilled cheeses on it, there's a chili, and there's a, a homemade hot pretzel, so. And breweries do it differently, uh, you know, you, you could just do a, a hot dog on like one of those 7-Eleven rolling things if you wanted to. But, uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's, and especially for German beers, I mean, this kind of goes with all beers. So. It's nice to have a, a, a full, a full pint, proper pint of of that beer, just because. But uh, sam samples are fine. I think samples are great. There, are one brewery that I really wish, and I mean this is, this is out of my control and definitely out of their control for now. But one brewery I really wish can get uh, pints or bigger pours of their beer is uh, Garrison City. Garrison City in Dover is a kick-ass brewery, and I look forward to every time I get a chance to get up there. And in fact, I hope to be going there this afternoon with my beer buddy, Ben. But 
they're in a situation where they're only a three barrel operation so all of their all of their sales are kind of are in house so they, they they pour all the samples there they also send out a lot of their growlers to stores to sell so that kind of but they sell that beer it's, it's not like they're sending beer to a store that doesn't sell but they're, they're basically selling out of all their beer so the while while it'd be easy to put a you know make a couple grilled cheeses uh, and get a license they just don't have that beer to give away in pints or to sell in pints because they want to make sure that they have enough to give for samples and for other accounts but ever been there dover garrison city they have they have plenty of uh they have, they have plenty of space to expand after uh since after uh getting rid of their eastern homebrew supply um brew shop which uh rumor has it was to make more space for just for the cans alone for the empty cans and crawlers so that's kind of crazy I'm not used to going in this late. I'm used to being at work already by now, but I'm going in after uh, going in after the thing, after the radio thing. Do I have time for coffee beforehand? That is, oh god, that'd be rough. I'm gonna have to make a quick stop. I gotta be there in 15 minutes. I'm about 10 minutes away, so we'll see what happens. I usually don't cut things this close. Today was a day something different. Today's a different day. Hopefully it's coming in good. I have no idea what this even sounds like because I've never periscoped on this phone. Actually, I did yesterday, but I didn't even know how that sounds, so I could be talking to no one right now. If anything, it's helping me warm up the old vocal cords. Come on, let's go. podcast update for those that listen to the podcast and watch the podcast there was a either I don't think my site was hacked but there was something that was preventing my episodes uh, of the podcast being uploaded to uh, audio uh, so if, if you're listening to it on iTunes or uh, other other means to, to get the audio podcast you probably weren't seeing the last three episodes but I think I fixed it so if you refresh your podcast app today you should be seeing what's called a test call it test 130 which is actually episode 130 but whatever i wanted to i just needed to send something out to say like hey is is my podcast feed receiving this and once i saw that i'll i'll now go back and supplement episodes that, that i've missed because in two weeks we're doing the best of 2015 which is literally like we're we're unbiased beer writers and we we want people to know that so this year we're we're doing for the first time we're doing our best of awards. We're, we're picking, we have 25 categories and we're just going to go through and say this, this is the best beer of New Hampshire, this is the best beer of New England, this is the best beer in the world for each of us. We're, we're, we're not going to come to a uh, unanimous decision amongst us four, so we're each going to have our own votes. So it's kind of one of the first times you're going to see um, a, it was a beer um, evangelist kind of pick a favorite and I'm excited about that because got to break free from that show and we uh we, we i mean it's cl- i mean if you listen to the podcast we talk about beers and breweries we love but it's time it's it's for 2015 we're starting to say this this is the these are the these are the people i like doesn't mean the ones that don't make the 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 actual vote are are bad but th- this is these, these are brews we like um and what 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 will it will result in um Four breweries or four breweries of the year, four beers of the year. So you, you're, you're gonna get a lot of. What you'll see is you, hopefully you get a lot of uh, variety, maybe some things you haven't heard of, which is kind of what we're going for. Is like here's the Seagrass Beverage Lab podcasts, best dubs, and so the best the best breweries of Vermont are, and they might be the same that that we picked, but I'm not gonna tell you what mine are. Mine are almost locked in. I, Still, there's still a couple more beers I want to try before narrowing it down. I'm hopping on 95 right now. It's uh, Community Radio is located on Islington Street in Portsmouth, which 
is uh, home to two breweries coming soon. Uh, one brewery that's already opened, I believe, Great Rhythm. And this is, I could be quoting wrong news, but from what I read, Great Rhythm Brewing, which currently brews out of Smut Labs in on Heritage Ave, they are gonna. They're looking for a space on Islington Street to move to make make their own brewery, which would be exciting. Then there's a brewery called the Liars Bench that's going up there. Um, that's going to Islington Street soon. So I don't know when that's going to open, but they're on Facebook. Check it out, Liars Bench. I believe it's the same guy that runs the Franklin Oyster House, or he has some involvement in that. Franklin Oyster House is in Portsmouth, downtown Portsmouth. So worth checking out. I might have time for a coffee. So I'm doing the 8 to 9 uh, set. used to asking the questions. This would be interesting to be like, uh, I'm used to asking the questions. I'm not used to being asked the questions, so this should be interesting. I got some notes. I got some notes. Should have went that way. Went that way. <laughs> Whoa. Oh my God. This went the streets that way, and I was going that way. So I usually go that way to go to Breaking New Grounds to get my coffee in the morning. Now switching up and going to Port City Coffee. The decisions you make, you know, what ifs. Has that Keebler Elf truck again? I'm not gonna be able to switch cameras, but that's a Keebler Elf truck right there. I mean, what timing too? But are all elves? Do they all have to be Christmas uh, elves? No, not those guys. They've been doing that. They've been doing that thing for years outside of Christmas. If I got, if I'm gonna continue doing more of these things, I gotta bring some water because the mouth dries up pretty quick. It is fun. I wonder if anyone even knows where I am, if you can look outside my window, but you really can't notice anything. So that's good. No secret. Might not even be in New Hampshire. Could be somewhere else. Who knows? Yeah. I think I left I think I left maybe five minutes too late. Because that's that sweet spot of me being being able to get a coffee and getting there on time is shrinking, but I know exactly what I want. Large iced coffee, give it. And the iced coffee, large iced coffee at Port City is, I think, a half a gallon of coffee, so that'll last me till Christmas, so it'll be good. But the way this light, and I should have, this is, pro tip, if you're anywhere near the Port Inn, Stay away from the port. <laughs> no, stay away from the intersection there because, man, the light does not change. That's that's some that's a pro tip about driving through Portsmouth. Is if you're coming off the traffic circle and you're at you're staring at the port in, and you're looking to go anywhere besides straight, you're going to be here for a while. There we go. That's just local talk right there, though. <laughs> the the air freshener thing is badass, so I might just keep it. And for those that watch, just deal with it. It's culture. Come on, friggin' culture. I'm staring at the radio station now. I believe I'm on Kate Street. Basically driving like uh, its its back is facing me right now. I think I've never been there, so it's gonna be interesting. Let's try to find it. But I know where the coffee place is, so that should be easy enough. I gotta get there around time because the coffee is gonna. Oh, they, they took the stop sign out here. Glory days. That's the. Oh man, you're getting some. You're getting some traffic updates, some beer updates. This is. This is turned out to be quite a swell show. 
Um, yeah, wow. Took the stop sign out of that corner? Danger. It's rarely you see that just being pulled out. So we're going, uh, I'm going to take it right up here. And once that park at it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it. But uh, check it out on Ports, Portsmouth Community Radio. I'm not sure if they upload it. Um, if, they end up, if I end up getting an audio version of it, I will see if I can put it on the SBO podcast feed. But um, rest assured that the Secrets Beverages Lab podcast is back up. Um, SBLpodcast.com to get the um, to get the feed. Uh, it's the same feed. You shouldn't have to touch anything. I didn't have to. Um, so definitely check that. Port City Coffee, I'm here. I got five minutes before I go, but I'm on air at um, 8 a.m. So check it out. And I appreciate you guys sticking around for the live drive. I'll talk to you. Bye.